Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, I'm going to be showing off Git grep, which is a tool to search in a Git repository. Uh, this was a question which was asked on stream recently, which is how do you recursively find a file? Um, and I'm going to answer in this video how I would do it for Git repositories. Um, now, I know there are other tools that do this, such as like Silver Searcher and a few others, but uh, I'm going to show you just very basic vanilla tools. So if you have Git, you already have this tool here. Um, and for today, we're going to be in the AST Pretty repository, which I've pre-cloned. Um, if you want to clone the same repository, here's the remote. Um, and the command we're going to be using is git grep. If we do git grep dash dash help, you'll see that it has quite a few options. Most of these are the same as grep itself. However, there are a few that are added particularly for git, such as like the submodule ones. Um, oh, I didn't know you could do this. Wait. That changes everything. Is that a thing? What does dash dash and do? That's why I multiple planet. Oh, what? Okay, that's really cool. I didn't know that you could use multiple patterns on this. Um, but that's pretty neat. But anyway, get grab <laughs> dash dash help. We're just going to show the basics today. I just learned something while looking at this, though. Um, so the basics of git grep is you just type git grep and then a pattern, and a pattern is a regular expression, similar to if you had just called grep, but it's going to run it against all of your files. So let's say that I wanted to look for, you know, tuple, uses of tuple in my repository. I would do git grep tuple, and it's going to show me all of the files that match it. In this case, there's only one file. Uh, what's something that is going to match in a bunch of files? If I look for AST, for instance, you'll see you know, there's matches in the readme, there's matches in AST pretty, there's matches in tests, etc., etc. All sorts of matches here. Um, now, note again, like this is grep, so by default it's using POSIX regexes, which are not very powerful. Uh, let's say we wanted to find calls to main, for instance. And uh, we wanted to make sure that there was at least one character inside the call to main. And so normally I would write that regex like this, um, but you'll see that we match nothing. And this is because we have POSIX regexes and we have to turn on extended regexes by doing dash capital E. Um, and you can see that I could find these there. So that's the very basics and how you can turn on uh, magic patterns. Now I'm gonna show you a few options that I find are really useful. Um, the first of those, uh, oh, they've added dash O. This didn't used to be there. So I don't know if it works. <laughs> uh, the first, and in my opinion, the most useful option to get grep is the dash L, dash little L option. Uh, this will just show you the file names that match a particular string here. So if I wanted to you know, find all the calls to main and then maybe open them in my text editor, I could run a command that looks like this, where I, you know, Git grep, I find all the files for it, and then I pass that as a subshell as the arguments to my text editor, and that'll open up those particular files. You can see it opened up AST pretty as well as test slash AST pretty test.py. Um, the other thing that you might want to do is filter the list of files. So if I did, you know, just this git grep dash l, maybe I don't care about the files that are outside of my tests. So I can do dash dash tests, and that will allow me to filter to just a particular subdirectory here. So you can see that it it only returns tests here. So maybe I wanted to, you know, I'll use Batty. Maybe I wanted to, you know, just find the test modules that that match that particular string. And this supports any glob that Git has. So if you wanted to do, for instance, like uh, you know, star.py. Um, note that I quoted it here because otherwise it would just match it in my current working directory. Like the shell is going to expand this, so it's only going to match astpretty.py because this command is actually different than what it looks like. So you can see this is this is the command that it actually ran there because the shell expanded this. Whereas if we had quoted this, this is the command that it runs. Um, so yeah, be be careful there and make sure that you're like quoting you're quoting the patterns that you want there. Um, what else? Is there anything else that I wanted to show? I think that's most of the stuff that I use. Oh, there's also dash capital L. Um, I, funny, funny story, I've actually contributed to this option in both grep and git grep to change how this, this option works. Um, little minor thing about the return code, but if I wanted to find files that don't match uh, a particular pattern, so let's say I wanted to find files that are, well, that's probably going to match, oh, that'll match something. Uh, match Python files, Python files that have that don't have calls to main. Um, you can see these are the two files that are .py and don't have that. 
Uh, if I remove the .py, you'll see a bunch more files match this because there are non-Python files that also do that. Um, but yeah, I think that's most of the options that I wanted to show for git grep. And I, I find this, this is probably one of the most common commands that I run in git if it's not just git status. It's probably, it's probably git status, git commit, and then git grep is probably the third one. Uh, but anyway, hopefully this is useful. If you have additional things you want me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.